Whew, it is 41 degrees, uh, so my normal Saturday morning is not going to happen. In this video though, I'm going to show you fantastic progress with the Troop Carrier. Found a product that I think is just unbelievably good. Uh, that behind me is the very last autograph uh, Overland uh, Land Cruiser that I'm going to build. There's going to be a video coming up soon about why I've stopped doing autograph Overland Troop Carrier builds. Yeah, this is the last one. It's the last one. And of course, my workshop is kind of finished. And there's a video on my alternative channel right now about how we turned our property into a uh, basically a self-contained, almost carbon neutral. We call it our urban farm. It's a farm. It's a little farm. In 2020, Gwyn and I got into the property market for the first time in Australia. And in a little over a year, we have turned our home into a 100% solar powered studio, workshop and urban farm. This is our story. It touches that rubber. That's the clearance. But I can get it out if I want to move it all out and open it up, um, which I will do when I start working on the interior fittings in the in the tent so that's on the other channel um, also on this video um, I've wrapped the troopy oh uh, I'm going to show you bits and pieces it is so good and I'm starting doing the detailing and I love this part of the process but we're going to start with about two weeks ago I actually slept in the roof conversion for the first time well, this is uh, the actual first night I've ever actually camped in the Alu Innovations Troop Carrier Roof Conversion. And, well, really just I haven't been on a trip or anything like that. I've actually just been to my friend uh, Highness Place for an evening meal and a, and a, uh, a chat, a nice to drink lovely meal, nice company, and I'm going to now sleep. Um, I'm parked near his home in the woods. I'll let you know in the morning uh, how comfortable it was. So far, lighting is working well. It's a bit too bright in here. It would be much nicer if it was duller. However, I can turn it down to the orange, this is kind of the orangey yellow, which is far kinder to the eyes than the white. So it'll be, it'll work. I'll probably just not use the white very much and just use the, um, the yellow orange. Uh, I've just got a pillow, sleeping bag, and a bottle of water. See you in the morning. Good morning. And to you too. What is it about these South African tent manufacturers? This mattress, I'm telling you the concrete slab underneath the Saturn V rocket has more give than this mattress. So I have to get a mattress topper on it to make it comfortable. But other than that, actually, it's really good. And I'll tell you something that I figured out, even though it's slightly narrower than the Hercules, you don't actually know, it's not, it's not noticeable because there's a lip on it that sort of, you still actually get the width, even though the mattress isn't quite that width. Actually, the tent itself, I don't believe is narrower. I think it's the same. Anyway, uh, nice, it's a nice sleep. I must say, I like the way they finish the inside. And the crow agrees with everything I say. He always does, you know, these crows. They always agree with me. Really grateful I did the ex little experiment there. I enjoyed that. That was good fun. Very important to a, uh, to a four-wheel drive enthusiast's mental development to be able to glance back at their vehicle while going out for the morning ablutions and look at their four-wheel drive and say, yeah, it's all right. Very, very important for our mental health. Very important. The birds here are wonderful. Is that nice? <laughs> I'm going to do a bit of work on it. Uh, the uh, um, interior, we've built the, the carcasses. They've been taken out because now the electrical installation, the plumbing installation will be put into them. And then the final thing, once fully wired and plumbed, will be then put back onto the foundation board. We are planning to have the vehicle finished and ready for travel 
by the end of February 2022. I've had the gull wings fitted, solid at the back, glass at the front. I have to show you now one of the best quality pieces of four-wheel drive gear I've ever seen. They come from Holland, a company called Explore Glazing. The finish is extraordinary for this industry. It really is. When deciding what to fit in terms of gull wings, um, I decided I wanted glass on this side. It's very important from for driver's point of view when uh, merging into traffic that you can look over your left shoulder and actually see through the window behind the passenger window. So uh, you, blocking off this window is a bad idea with a troop carrier. Uh, it is, uh, is a safety concern. But the glass, I, I looked at a couple of glass products in, uh, in Australia. None of them, I wasn't that happy with them. I was happy with quite a few of the solid ones, but none of the glass ones. And the guys at uh, ProCam Solutions um, bring these into the country. Uh, this was their first batch, amongst their first batch, I believe. And the quality of the catches the quality of the finish, the way it looks, I could not have dreamed it would be this good. The time to install was considerably faster than any other similar gull wing they have ever fitted. And I know that it's a common fault of people, because so many of the accessories in this industry are created by small workshops doing a really, really good job. And one of the things that they often um, don't pay enough attention to is how easy is it to fit, because they're sent out, and other people that don't know the product as well as the designers do have to figure out how to fit it. And um, that's everything, because not only, you know, if you're producing a really beautiful product, but it's really difficult to fit, it costs money to fit, as well as costing money to buy. So the overall cost of the unit is the unit plus labour. And if the labour is high because it takes too long, then some great products actually automatically price themselves out of the market. And what's more is that there are some accessories available for um, the Explore Glazing gull wings. Um, I've not seen them. I'm going to see them for the first time now. The tension to detail, the, the panel gap, is perfect. I'm back. <laughs> Every build I do, I uh, <coughs> get my cars wrapped, of course, as you know, and I'm here to see my one for the first time. I've chosen this time for a standard 3M wrap color. It's okay. called Satin Battleship Grey. I've asked it to be trimmed with black, the bottom of the doors and side panels, but for them to stop before they did the bonnet, because I've got some ideas that I want to share with them. We would do the traditional, you come a diagonal from here to that point, like we did before, and you do that back, okay, as you've done it before. But now, one of the ideas was to actually extend the black line around so that's black yeah and we extend the black to yeah, go around the natural curve of the so this section here yes yeah. but there's a natural curve here yeah. to follow that natural curve yeah. and there's a gentle curve 
Yeah. I know you're quite good at this, so I reckon you're going to have to get that. That curve is going to be quite difficult to get, but that's what I think will will actually look really nice. Okay. Well, one of the things I love doing, building my trip carriers, is taking care of the detail. Detail to me is everything. Um, so I'm so thrilled with the wrap. The quality is fantastic. The look, it's very photogenic. I love it. But I don't like these wing mirrors. Now I could change them for, they're called clear view mirrors. They're very large, very bulky, great for towing, stick out a long way, and I think are really ugly. That chrome on the GXL wing mirrors is also quite ugly. So I thought, and it was a bit of an afterthought, and I asked the chaps at Sinorama, is it possible, this was after they'd finished the job, is it possible to wrap the mirrors? And they said, oh, absolutely. Uh, but it was while I was collecting it that I asked them. So I'm going to, I have some uh, spare wrap that they gave me, and I, have, I asked them a few tips, and I'm going to try and wrap that myself. So as you can see here, this is the job that Sinorama did on the Autograph Overland vehicle, and it's absolutely beautiful. Now, for my attempt, and as you can see, not quite as professional as the guys at Sinorama, so I think I might drop the mirrors off and get them to do it. When they did the wrap, they removed, of course, these emblems, the Land Cruiser, Toyota Land Cruiser emblems. On both sides, one on both sides of the vehicle, they removed that emblem from the tailgate and two GXLs. I, I know one was on the tailgate, I don't know where the other one is. Anyway, maybe there were only one of those. So I thought, actually, let's do something, let's replace them with something more interesting. So I purchased on the internet some uh, Toyota emblems from the 1970s. What do you think of that? So I'm going to look at pictures of um, the um, 40s series Land Cruisers, where they positioned these, because um, I don't want to make it look like a 40 series. That's not what I'm trying to do, but I'm just trying to give it a... a get, I'm trying to make it more interesting. All right, with no particular goal in mind other than that. This, I think that's beautiful. That goes on the tailgate. So that could go in the place where it is with the, um, the current Land Cruiser, or might even go there. If I have a look here at the, this beautiful 40 short wheelbase, um, it's over the wheel arch, kind of aligns with the, so it would actually sit about there, below the bonnet line, and that's, would, that would be if I was going to go true to the 40 series, I would need to put it there. And likewise, it would be here. That actually looks quite good, to be honest. And so, I, I think I'm going to just put some dabs of double-sided tape on them and stick them and <laughs> be able to stand back. But before I make my final decision, I am going to fit the wheel arch flares. The rims for the Troopy have just arrived and I want to show you what we're going to do with them. Having looked on the internet at a lot of rim makers, these are not my absolute favourites when it comes to pure aesthetics. I found some others that I prefer. However, every one that I preferred to these were not available in 16 inch, they were only available in 17 or above. I do not want big rims. I want smaller rims and higher profile tyres. So I'm not going a big tyre, you know, I'm not going 33s. I'll be, the tyres are I think a 31.7 uh, diameter. And, and because I'm not going the bigger diameter, I must have higher sidewalls to be able to get the advantage from the tyres when I drop the pressures. So 17 inch, no, forget it, I'm not interested. However, I really like these, but there are a few things about them that I don't like. These nuts, bolts, silver bits, 
the bling I don't like. It's unnecessary. So I've got an idea. The truth is I really like the look of these grey steelies. I like them because of their style, but also because of their colour. I can't use them because they're too narrow for the tyres I want to use. So how about changing the colour of the alloys? Now the process is basically you're going to take these rims and you're going to ruin them before you make them look fantastic, yes? Yes. So, <laughs> so we, based, we are going to, what we need to do to do a full colour change, we will um, do what we call, we, we scuff the paint to prepare it so that when we do the, put the new paint on, it uh, sticks. It sticks based yes. in, okay. in reality. Sure. So this has got a clear coat, protective coat, so we would be sanding it back going down the edges. Right. But the first thing we do is we'll do the barrel, the inner barrel, and we'll do the outside. Um, on these, you, you, I've got, yeah. I then, want to remove all that bling. It's yeah, a good I was going to say, that, that was like Take it off. I don't want it. You don't want it. No. Well, that, that helps the process a okay. lot. Because good. if it had, um, it's quite a, a mission to mask up and keep those, the yes. little silver bits. Yes. So I actually that. removed bolts. The they were, they were, they yeah. were yeah. Um, like fake nuts. Fake nuts. Yeah. I took them all off. Yeah, that's fine. So what we would probably do, we would just do a little bit more prep inside where the, where the silver than okay. it. Than it than okay. It. So a color swatch, um, I don't know what to begin with. Perhaps we should, um, my daughter has a really nice little Audi with a beautiful gray. It's slightly warm, it's quite deep. I, I, let's try Volkswagen and see what they've got. See what they've got. Okay. You've got three of them there. Audi. There you go, first one. That was easy. Actually, that's actually that's not bad. It was the first thing I. Uh, uh, not metallic. So not not metallic. metallic. These are all. That's another one. It's a flat grey. Actually, a couple. No, they're metallics. That's too light. Okay, there's two. One with possibilities, dark. one slightly darker than the other. Cute. Okay. Now you have every manufacturer, yeah. <laughs> just about every color swatch there is. Solid colors. I like solid colors in, a car, in cars. Yeah. I, think, I think more cars should be made in solid colors. It was one of my, another one of my disappointments with the new uh, Land Rover Defender. They just had ordinary car colors like that, yeah. that everybody is familiar with. Whereas the um, Suzuki Jimny had beautiful greens and an ivory and a gorgeous green flat colors look fantastic and with the defender they did nothing special with the colors nothing they just did their ordinary too light their ordinary dull color swatch I think dull because they're common okay well we've ended up with two colors two grays and that is without question the gray that um, my daughter has on her Audi that's it there. My question is, which grey do we go? Do we go the darker grey or do we go the lighter grey? I would, I'd personally go the slightly darker grey. I think so too. Be, because um, just thinking when you're out there, you're getting a bit of dirt and stuff like that. The lighter the colours, the more it will show. Um, that doesn't really worry me because the grey and the red dust contrasting actually looks quite nice. Sure. But I do agree with you that I think that grey will pop. Okay, my decision is made. Okay. Do them like that, please. Okay, great. Thank you okay. very much. <laughs> yeah. That was quick. Yeah. I think that'll look. I think that'll look very nice. Sure. Okay. One question I have. I've heard the other uh, alternative process would be dipping. Because my research is, I am completely undecided. I've looked at both and researched a bit of both and pros and cons. I'm not seeing a definite, yes, that's the way to go. Uh, so I'm kind of here. I'm going to try one of them. You're going to try one of them. I'm going to try one of them. Sure. We, we don't do dipping ourselves, but the way I understand it is it's often more like a rubber coat that they'll put on. Depends what, on the shop or who you use it. But they literally do have a bath of paint and they, they drop it in and pull it right out. So 
um, if there's a rubber coat that's been dipped, like sometimes some places, some wheels that have been dipped before, you can almost see the uh, the, paint, uh, the rubber coat peeling, and then you can peel it off. Um, okay. So, so, so there, there's you would say this is a this aesthetically this is going to look better. Do you think it's going to be more or less durable or similar? I would say it would be more durable because of the clear coat that's on top. Like if you tear that, um, in my, uh, the way I understand it, like having a clear, this is the, painting it is the way the rim, 90% of the rims are done. Otherwise, if dipping was more durable, more people would do the dipping. Yeah. Okay. So now we know how big the tank is precisely how many litres. Okay. 111 litres. 111, which is more than, more than what we thought we were, yeah, we were We were thinking that it might be as little as 85. Yeah. Almost what we were made to measure. So next week I'm going to be delivering my troop carrier to your workshop. We're going to be working on it together. You're going to teach me some of the finesse of good DC wiring. I'll try. You won't. You won't <laughs> fail. I promise you. But but now, how do you see my build in terms of its electrics? What are you hoping to achieve? I'm hoping to achieve that you can do your induction cooking the way you want to right? and recharge your batteries within your driving cycle right? and standing cycle. So obviously you want to make sure that you never run out of power, which right. I think we've got a battery bank that is big enough. Right. I think we've got charging capability that is big enough. The only obstacle that I still see is your alternator. I think we might be changing that sooner or later to a bigger unit. Yes, because we are going to be stretching it, that is for sure. That, yes. Yeah, but I mean, we we can start like that. The yes. DC-DC chargers are just going to reduce charging if there's not enough voltage available. So just right. in case the DC-DC chargers drain too much power, voltage drops too far, we can put we can put a bottom into it, right. and they'll not go below that. They'll just reduce current. Oh, okay. So you'll be on the safe side, but you it will take longer for you to charge your secondary battery system and we are also using my vehicle as a showpiece for our Egon products absolutely so DC DC hub people know about the water hub we've got the final version well I was gonna say final <laughs> it's the one that we are very happy with that is actually now going to be going for sale on you know actually being sold uh, how many prototypes the, the version ones did we sell about yeah, 20 about 20 yeah. so they, they work really well very, there's very nothing well. wrong with them and you will never get a better housing than in the version one that housing you can almost shoot at if you want no to. you could but you could actually it, that's also how heavy it is so yeah. we had to improve that a little bit and the versatility of mounting that housing was not great either 
it, it worked, but it was not easy. You needed quite a bit of real estate yes. for it, and the new one is... And it looked a bit clumsy as well. It, uh, it, it had a real industrial look to it. And yeah. you, some people might like that, but I thought it wasn't refined enough. It, yeah. didn't quite suit. So. so the new one is, the footprint is so much smaller, but basically the machinery, the mechanics inside is the same, because yes. it works. We optimized the plumbing a lot, so there's a lot less runs in it, so we got smarter about the plumbing now. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's still doing the exact same thing, but it's less effort to plumb it all up. That's, that's the beauty. And of course, the product that nobody, know, because this is the very first time we've actually talked about it on, yes. uh, on air, as it were, is the relay hub what yeah. is the egon relay <laughs> hub so that is that is the extension it's pretty much a daughter board to the dc hub so the dc hub is purely for power distribution and connecting everything together and a lot of people have to ask well, how can you switch is there can we do switching can we do switching somehow and i think it does make a lot of sense so what the relay hub does is it takes one of the high amp outputs on the DC hub, goes onto the relay hub, and then you've got five circuits on the relay hub that you can switch on and off with fuses on the relay hub itself. So it's an extension board or daughter board, so yes. to speak, yes. to introduce switching capability to the DC hub. And we've made it as a daughter board just in case somebody doesn't need that, and they can just buy a DC hub, or if somebody just wants switching for let's say battery box, they can just use the relay hub or if somebody's got a big build, they can use both. This is a, to me, again, it's like the DC hub, everything, our, our thought process were, okay, that's fantastic, how can we make it even more versatile? So you don't need a DC hub to use a relay hub. No, you don't. You just have to power it with a, with a, with a, with a cable that has enough current to handle is it five times 25 amp? Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. So it's got a it's got an 80 amp max input, and each circuit on there can carry 25 amp. So obviously you can't use all the circuits at 25 amp at the same time, but that's usually not what happens anyway. Yeah. So you got an 80 amp maximum current uh, throughput on that unit, and then five circuits with 25 amp. And the beauty of that is that you can the same way as the DC hub. You can wire everything up with multi-core cables. Even the switches will integrate into the relay hub just with a seven-core trailer cable, with the power supply for the switches being part of the relay hub as well. Yeah. Uh, that might be easier to explain that with uh, the we'll, unit. We'll, we'll get to that, we'll, we'll get to that. But it, again, it's the same principle. It is just simplifying what is actually something that people do all day, every day. It is just simplifying it in a massive, massive way. And um, and we've also got an extension to that, which we're now developing and talking about, called the Switch Hub. But we're not going to talk about that now. But no. that is going one step further. Yes. That is something that we're, we're again, that'll be that'll be an add-on for the Relay Hub again. But I don't want to go into no. that. Is still in the development process, and we yeah. will use the prototype on your car yeah. to test it. Yeah. Uh, and then so we we'll take that's it from long that. away. That's at some di some distance away to yes. actually be able to uh, say, okay, this is it, because we're still developing and testing it. Yeah. But the uh, relay hub will be on, on sale quite soon. Um, it will be, and the night I, I'm excited about it because it will integrate into so many systems. For example, the ARB Link system yes. works perfectly with the relay hub. Like the relay hub is like an extension yeah. for the Link system. Yeah. And for other switching systems that aren't capable of switching high currents, Relay Hub works perfectly. It'll be so, yeah. It will be a very versatile circuit board with a housing that looks very similar to the DC Hub housing. Yeah. And it can integrate with so many other systems. Plus, I think it will look really cool mounted next, next to each other. Okay, which is what we're going to do with my trip. We're yes. actually going to mount it. Um, and we, even the Water Hub actually is going to be mounted next to it. It's, it's turned out extremely well. Yeah. How many times have we changed my design now? I have lost At least time. five. Every time we think we've got it, Rob calls me in and says like, by the way, we've changed a thing or two. And I'm already going like, here we go again. We start from scratch. But I think it's gotten better every time. No question. It's, got, it's just got a little bit better every single time. All right. That coming soon. Thanks everybody for watching.
The next time you'll see the trip carrier will be at Heiner's place and well, where we're actually going to be doing the installation and I will we will take you along every step of the way. Yeah. Thanks Learn about DC. Thanks for watching. If you are a true adventurer at heart, join us at overlandworkshop.com as some of the world's most experienced overland explorers share their secrets of successful expedition travel.